This is the third uh, video in a series of lectures on adaptive control. Uh, last video we have given an overview of the uh, system identification problem. We have shown that the parameter estimation is one component in system identification. Our ultimate goal is to have a recursive algorithm for parameter estimation. However, as a starting point in this video, we will introduce parameter estimation using batch processing and based on the least square principles we will proceed to find the required uh, recursive uh, least square algorithm in uh, coming videos. The least square principle uh, can be stated as follows. The sum of the squares of the difference between actual and computed values uh, is minimum. Now, uh, normally uh, the actual value would be the observed measurements and the computed values will be values based on the uh, computed parameter estimates. Uh, the difference between the two is called uh, the errors and we normally try to find some function, some positive function uh, in, in the case of the least squares would be the s uh, squares of the errors uh, and we try to minimize to find the unknown parameters that would minimize uh, that uh, cost function. Uh, sometimes we multiply the errors by uh, different weights, and the reason for that uh, could be due to different accuracies of the different errors, or because we would like to give more weight to more recent data. So assume that we have a system which is linear in the parameters. The parameters in uh, this equation would be Psi1, Psi2 up to Psi n. The output y uh, depends also on some known functions which are given the symbols Phi1, Phi2 and Phi uh, n. These functions could be linear or non-linear in the system inputs and outputs. However, it is linear in the unknown parameter Psi1 and up to Psi n as we indicated before. The equation, uh, the ab above equation here, could be actually represented in a vector notation as Phi transpose vector Phi transpose times vector Psi, where the components of uh, Phi would be the functions, the known functions Phi 1 up to Phi n, and the components of Psi would be the unknown parameter Psi 1 up to Psi n. So we can restate our objective, our least squared objective as that the problem is to determine the parameter theta. Now theta would be the values calculated and will correspond to the, uh, to the unknown true values of psi. So we calculate theta such that the output computed from the predicted value, the predicted value as we can notice here is y hat and it's dependent on the known functions phi times the uh, value theta. That function should agree as closely as possible with the measurement y in the least square sense. It would perfectly agree with y if we substitute psi here for theta. However, since we don't know the true values of psi, then there will be an error and that error is the error that we would like to minimize its sum of squares by choosing an appropriate value of so we assume a cost function and as we can see that cost function is quadratic depends on the error between the observed data and the predicted values and we have here one half this is just for convenience as we are going to get the gradient of v and that will uh, because of the quadratic term here we will get uh, two times the derivative so that will cancel one half and that will be just uh, an easier for the manipulation. Now, uh, the cost function could be written as one half over the sum of the squares of the errors or in vector notation it is E transpose times E where the vector E is composed of the error components epsilon 1 up to epsilon uh, t. We can also put the observed uh, data y in a vector, we call that vector y, and the uh, vectors 
of uh, the known functions phi we put it in a matrix we call it uh, phi here uh, this vector is normally called in parameter estimation the regressor or the data uh, vector now in order to uh, obtain the estimate theta hat that minimizes v we should differentiate the cost function with respect to a vector theta so that needs a brief mathematical background because we are going to differentiate with respect to a vector rather than to a scalar so we'll consider first a case where we have a scalar function f which is equal to x transpose x x is a vector components of x would be x1 up to xn consequently x transpose times x would be the sum of the squares of the components of x so if we differentiate the scalar f with respect to x it means that actually we will differentiate first with respect to x1 then with respect to x2 and so on up to xn and that will lead to this result where the result would be ti 2 times the vector x on the other hand if we have a, a scalar function f and uh, it's equal to a, a constant vector a transpose times our variable vector x then again the product of a transpose times x would be a scalar quantity which is composed of a1 x1 up to a n x n and we notice here that a transpose x since it is a scalar is equal also to x transpose a so if we differentiate with respect to x again we are going to differentiate with respect to x1 then x2 and so on the result would be a vector a so if we apply these simple rules to our cost function v we notice that v is equal to one half e transpose e if we take the gradient of v with respect to theta then we have to use the chain rule so we differentiate first with respect to e and then we differentiate with respect to uh, we differentiate e with respect to uh, theta so th the result of this differentiation would be the partial derivative of e with respect to theta times the uh, vector e and that will uh, be equal to minus phi transpose y minus phi theta if you put that equal to zero to obtain the minimum of the function that would lead to the least squares formula theta hat which is equal to phi transpose phi inverse times phi transpose y we notice that the result is a minimum because v is quadratic we know uh, f f for a quadratic function uh, which is positive all the time if we get uh, an extremum that extremum would be a minimum and it is a global minimum we can write the expression of the least square estimate theta hat in this form it is uh, similar to what we have done before except that we wrote the product phi transpose the matrix phi transpose times phi in terms of its columns and vectors so phi i here would represent the columns of uh, the matrix phi transpose and this will represent the rows of the matrix phi so the summation here over uh, i from 1 to t which is the number of uh, data points would give us the estimate uh, we notice that in order to calculate the estimate theta hat we need to get the inverse of the matrix phi transpose times phi and this condition is known in the literature as the excitation condition we are going to see uh, in coming videos that this will depend on uh, how much the input is capable of exposing the dynamics of the system at the observed data uh, as I mentioned before we could weigh the measurements differently however the formula we obtained is based on an equal weight for all measurements